Hi everyone, welcome back to the Steam and Sand Dome tutorial in SolidWorks. In our last video we went over how to draw a Steam Dome, and we're going to build on that now and show how to do basically the same thing, but on a conical surface. So if you'd like to view the last video first, uh, there's a link in the description below. don't really need it as a prerequisite to this video, but it might help fill in some things if I'm kind of rushing through them. We will be drawing a Sand Dome on a tapered surface. I have some drawings of uh, an 80 ton shea here. I don't have great dimensions on the dome, but we'll just use this image as uh, a reference to get the proportions mostly correct. I do have the boiler drawing, so we'll be able to get uh, the course is correct for what the large diameter, small diameter, and the distance between them are. So let's get started. We're gonna follow pretty much the same procedure as the previous video, but the first step is going to be a little bit different. I have a new drawing started here. We'll start the same way. We're going to draw our two circles to represent the bottom flange of the dome. Uh, we'll scale this, since this is a narrow gauge locomotive, we'll scale this one to two and a half inch scale. So our scale factor for that is one to 4.8. So every dimension that we put in here off the full size print is going to get divided by 4.8. Let's keep an uh, eighth inch wall thickness though. That'll still work out nice. If this was a, a casting or something, uh, I think I think eighth inch wall thickness would be reasonable. So this, this will actually be a conical surface here. We've got a large diameter of 59 inches coming down to a smaller diameter of 50 inches. And their center lines are offset. The jacket would be a couple inches larger than this. So let's add four inches to the diameter, uh, and that'll give us should give us a pretty close approximation of the surface that the um, that the sand dome will be sitting on. So large end fifty nine, small end fifty. We're gonna add four to each. So we have fifty nine plus four divided by four point eight. And just like last time, we're gonna draw a line through the middle so that we're only dealing with half a circle for this. Make the center point vertical with the origin. And now that's fully defined. And now we need to create an offset plane to represent the small end of the course of the boiler. So let's look real quick at what that distance is. So we can take this 69 and 11 sixteenths, but the small end is actually set back by just over two inches, two and a quarter. 69 and 11 sixteenths minus two and a quarter. 67 and seven sixteenths. So 67.4375 divided by 4.8. So now our smaller course was 50. I'm gonna add four, so 54 inches divided by 4.8. Uh, except I want to do this by the inside. Make this eighth inch wall. Inside we want to be there are 54 divided by 4.8. Make these two circles vertical and then we need to know how far apart they're offset from each other, which I have here. Uh, right here, three and seven eighths. So 3.75 divided by 4.8. Cut this in half. Okay, now we want to create a loft which will form our tapered surface, our conical surface. I'll grab the two sketches and click loft. And it should automatically pick the two profiles, which it did beautifully. So now what we want to do is use this distance between the smokestack and our sand dome as our reference. Usually I would use the distance to the steam dome, but uh, the dimensions on our boiler are, there's a lot of them to add and subtract together to to find where the steam dome is on the boiler. It'll be much cleaner if we just go to the smokestack, so we'll do that. The center line of the smokestack is dimensioned to the same to the same line that we used as the reference for the small end of our course. So the smokestack is 25 and a half inches in front. 25 and a half inches to here. Oh, that's right, we're doing it in miniature, divided by 4.8. Now, We'll make this vertical so this can't move around. We know from our elevation drawing that we are 43 and 13 sixteenths from the stack. 43 plus 
13 sixteenths divided by 4.8. Now, if you wanted to, you could delete these and, and just use one dimension. Maybe take out all the crazy decimals, if you so please. Now, this actually looks pretty close. Let's say it's six inches in diameter, maybe six and a half. Now, just like before, we're going to do a flip to cut, flip side to cut through all. And now we have the taper, our conical tapered flange for our steam dome. So now we can repeat the same steps as before to create the rest of the dome. But you may notice now that our, our front plane is nowhere near the center. And we're going to need a plane to intersect the center of this uh, when we draw our guide curves for the loft. Before I go on, we'll just create a plane real quick. Make it parallel to the front plane. Turn on my temporary axes and make it coincident with the center of the flange. Now we'll just drag this to make it visible, usable. We can hide this though for now. So now let's draw our dome. This one's pretty simple compared to the steam dome we did yesterday. I still prefer to do this as a revolve. I just find it a little bit easier to control the dimensions and easier to edit later on if, if I decide that something doesn't look quite right. So I'll throw a point down here, intersect it with the center and the top of this, and I'll use this as my reference for the height. It's a pretty tall dome. I'll just go seven inches. The diameter of this part is not quite, um, it's fairly wide compared to the other dome. It looks like it comes fairly close to the edge. So I think this two and a half inches will get us there. This would make this uh, a five inch diameter. We still want this to stick out. Revolve that. We'll delete our face here. Get rid of those. Don't need them. And now we need to do our loft. So we'll create one more offset plane. Um, we'll just do this off the top. Actually, where that's sitting now looks pretty good. I think that'll be good. Oh, just kidding. That was our reference. That is our top plane. The plane I was creating was way off in the distance somewhere. Knowing that, we could just do it on the top plane, but to have some flexibility later, if we want to change it, we will still do this on uh, on a created plane. This will be easier to edit later if we wanted to to change this rather than using our top plane. So now we'll draw our circle. We'll just throw a circle on there and make it co-radial with the dome. And now we're ready to draw some guide curves for our loft. We'll start from this side. Should be the right plane. Yes. And exactly the same procedure as before. We'll make it tangent with the side of the dome. We're going to make this coincident. This point will be coincident with the very edge of the flange. And I want to make sure that the top of this arc is coincident with our sketch that we drew here. Now, we'll draw the other side on this plane we created here. Now, one difference you'll notice, uh, unlike the steam dome, in this direction, we don't really have a clean edge that we can connect it to. But if you grab the point and this swooping circle and make it pierce rather than coincident, it will lock on to the location on this edge that uh, intersects with the plane that the sketch is on. If you were to just make this coincident, then it can ride around anywhere on this line in sort of a 2D projection. The pierce point will force it to where we want it to go. So now we'll do the same thing on this side. Now we have our four guide curves and we'll create our loft. 
So our starting point, ending point, we want our starting point to be normal to profile. And now we can just walk around and select our guide curves. That looks pretty close. Let's see. Maybe the dome needs to be a little bit bigger diameter, but easy to change. Make it two and three quarters on the radius. Eh, two, two and five eighths. Add a quarter inch. That's probably a little bit closer. Uh, and last but not least is to shell it out. Make it uh, uniform eighth inch wall thickness or whatever your heart desires. But that pretty much does it. I want to show you one other thing. I, th I think the Ken Schroeder Shea has a, has a tapered course with the sandal on it. It's the same diameter at the large end and the small end, and it just tapers down. So it'd be the exact same procedure for that kind of dome. Um, all you would want to do differently is when you make the second course, you would make the diameters the same. And then you'd have your offset, whatever it needs to be. Now, say one inch. Stop and repair. What went wrong? I wonder if we just need this plane to be a little bit higher now with this new geometry. That's why it was useful to do it this way. Make this quarter inch higher. Yeah. So now this is basically the same thing, but instead of a conical shell, it's, it's purely just a, a, a slant. So I hope this was helpful. Hope you enjoyed. I'll have a lot more tutorials coming in the future. Hopefully at the very least these videos are fun to watch. I think it's always fun to watch a part come alive on the screen and even more fun to take it from a screen to a real part. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed and want to see more of these videos in the future. And, uh, and I'll see you next time.